All right. All right, welcome everyone. A celebrity fashion advertising photographer, Kevin Michael Schmitz here, and right. I am talking about pricing, which is one of my favorite All right, topics. All welcome everyone. Because uh, it's one of the things that so many of our photographers miss the boat on is pricing your photography. Now, uh, many of you guys uh, photograph portraiture, weddings, or you shoot commercial advertising photography, or even a fine art photographer. Um, but oftentimes, and I would say, I would even go so far as to say about 95% of photographers that uh, are out there are not pricing their photography properly. And what I mean by that is that oftentimes photographers are uh, in a hurry just to book jobs and, you know, there's only so many opportunities out there and photographers are always feeling like there's a lot of competition. So they oftentimes are going to be on a, you know, competing on price. Oh, so, you know, if I'm a portrait photographer or I'm a wedding photographer, I'm just going to charge, uh, you know, just enough to be able to get booked. And being able to adjust your pricing uh, to to land clients is what happens a lot of the time. And honestly, guys, that is a race to the bottom. And I highly uh, would recommend that you would start to think about your photography in a different way. And I know that this is going to go, uh, you know, it's kind of some contrarian thinking because it goes against what a lot of photographers um, are thinking about their photography and about the business of photography. But remember, each and every one of you as a photographer, you are also a business owner. And many photographers don't think of themselves as business owners. They think of themselves as creators and, oh, I'm just a photographer. I'm this, you know, freelance. But you know what? Being a freelance photographer means that you are a business owner. You are either a sole proprietor or you have an LLC that you've registered, but essentially you are a business. And I would strongly recommend you guys treat your photography like a business. It's very, very, very important. So there's a lot of different methods to this. And I've had, I, I also love to post articles specifically about pricing. And you can also find some great articles about pricing on uh, my website, photographyworkshopseries.com. And under the article section, we have some fantastic articles specifically about pricing. And we love to coach our photographers in that because oftentimes uh, they are looking for guidance on what I, you know, what you should charge. You know, what, what is kind of the going rate? What should we charge? And I'm going to go in depth about that today and give you the ultimate pricing guide. Uh, because for so many photographers that don't really know how to price their photography, um, we're going to go in depth about that and talk about um, the different methods of pricing and what ones might work, uh, work you know, better for you and your type of photography. Certain pro, you know, certain ways of pricing that might have worked in the past, but maybe aren't working as well now. Um, I know that's a big common challenge for a lot of wedding photographers, where you know, in the past it was always, um, you know, you 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 get a buy-in for a wedding, but then you make a lot of money on the back end on selling prints, and maybe now you don't have as many of the print sales. So we have to make up for that. We have to come up with a solution for that. So, um, and by the way, guys, um, I'm going to send a whole series of links, but the first one I do want to share with you um, is specifically a link about this article's, um, there's a great uh, article that we have specifically about pricing and um, a lot of this, and I do recommend you guys go to this. It's on photographyworkshopseries.com on the article section, and it specifically talks about pricing. Okay. Now, um, this is, uh, and this is the link. I, I sent it to all of you guys, but I would recommend you guys, you know, read this in depth at a later point as well. Um, but one of the things I always love to do is, um, you know, start looking at, you know, the competition. What is the pricing that is the going rate that is out there? Now, oftentimes photographers are trying to set themselves in kind of the medium going rate uh, so they can just make enough uh, to book the clients and not scare them away. However, what I would suggest you do is start to think about, okay, you know, what is the going rate in the upper tier markets? You know, what is the going rate? Say, for instance, if you're a wedding photographer and you want to be a, um, uh, you want to make a lot of money as a wedding photographer. 
and you want to go into um, in, even if you're in a local market, say you're in, you know, Idaho or Michigan or, you know, uh, Oklahoma or something like that. Um, but, you know, and maybe you're not charging enough for your photography. Maybe you have a lower, uh, you know, lower package buy-in. Um, but uh, I would suggest to start looking at what the pricing is in the higher tier markets, such as um, what is the pricing going for in Manhattan, New York? What is the pricing in Beverly Hills and Los Angeles? What is the pricing in Miami Beach? Okay. And the reason is, is because remember guys, no matter what location you're in, you don't necessarily have to only photograph in your region. And you don't necessarily have to be confined to the locality that you're at to, you know, to figure out what kind of pricing you're going to offer. And even though maybe people in your rural area, like I'm from rural West Michigan, and in my rural area, you know, maybe people in West Michigan aren't willing to spend $15,000 for a wedding photographer, but you know, clients that are in, you know, some of the wealthy areas of Chicago, which is only a few hours away, or uh, clients in New York or Boston or LA or San Francisco definitely will spend $15,000 on their photographer, like without question. Okay. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to be limited to that specific region. So start thinking yourself as more of a national photographer. And of course, there's ways of marketing yourself as that as well. Um, and we're going to get to that um, because of course there's the component of what you're offering and price, but then also, um, and what you're getting, but then also uh, the value add that you're going to bring to the table of why you can justify that price. Okay. And there's different types of pricing out there. Of course, when a lot of photographers will, um, I know a lot of photographers who uh, bill by the hour, you know, oh, you know, I'm going to charge, um, you know, $300 an hour for my wedding photography. OK, um, and however many hours I'm there, I'm going to be uh, I can charge for that for those hours. OK, I know a lot of photographers that do that. I know that there's also a method of, um, you know, a lot of photographers that I coach that are just doing some very low budget packages where they're, you know, offering a very, very, very small buy in just to get the customers to book because like, oh, my gosh, what a deal. Right. Um, and uh, but then. Uh, when they are, um, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, if you're, if you're kind of drawing in those low end customers, are they going to buy more in the back end? Well, oftentimes they're not oftentimes that they are, um, you know, going to be, uh, just going to do the bare minimum, uh, because they are more of a bottom of the barrel client. And I would also ask you, you know, review not only your competition of who else is out there and what they are charging, but also review, you know, essentially what the value that the other the other photographers are bringing to the table and, you know, and start evaluating those specific customers. So if we can kind of take an evaluation of not just the photographers in your region, but also the photographers in the upper scale areas, what they're charging, what their packages range for. And I'm off, I'm, I'm asking a survey too. you know, how much do you charge for your photography? And I'm, I'm very curious on this guys. And there's a series of questions here. One is it's in the, it's in the uh, polls um, in the survey question. Um, the first is on average, how much do you charge for wedding photography packages? And, and what I mean is your average package sale, not like, I know they all range, but what's your average sale. Okay. And, you know, is it, um, and if, and if you don't shoot weddings, that's fine. Just say you don't shoot weddings, but is it, you know, a thousand, 2000, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, what is it? Um, if you charge, uh, how much do you charge for your portrait photography? And then again, it's your average portrait, portrait, portrait package sale. And then how much you charge for your commercial clients. Um, and, uh, and you know, those would be commercial advertising campaigns. That's the kind of stuff that I do. Um, but I've done it all. And I started out my career doing portraits and weddings. Uh, so I have a lot of experience with this as far as pricing and package pricing and being able to um, understand what the clients are looking for. And also, you know, what might scare them away, uh, but what also can attract clients and what's going to attract the correct clients, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for the correct clients, the clients that are willing to spend um, on your investment. Now, um, under this, uh, you know, uh, way of thinking, I'm going to um, I'm gonna go back to my article and I'm going to specifically showcase guys. Um, this is a method 
of um, a price packaging where I think that this is very fair. This is a very fair. This is in the article, but anywhere between um, five thousand dollars and twelve thousand dollars a package for wedding photography, and I think that's very fair. I don't think that's high. I don't think that that's too low. I think that that's a fair range. Um, and if you want to maybe take out one of those um, and just go with three packages, that's also totally cool. But I wouldn't recommend anything more than four packages and anything less than three packages. But I would say somewhere between three and four packages. Okay, so like a basic silver, gold, platinum. And, you know, the, the target of what we're trying to go for is we're not trying to book customers for $5,000 packages. We're trying to book photographers generally in the seven to 10,000 range. You know, maybe not everybody's going to book a $12,000 package, the whole premium ultra luxury one. Um, but we want to essentially offer a huge value, completely insane value on the platinum package. It's just so over the top of the ultra wealthy customer that wants the best. And then for the basic package, offer next to nothing. Offer just as little value as possible so that the customer feels like they need to go for at least the silver package to have this worthwhile, okay? Um, but when you're talking to customers and they ask you straight off the bat what your pricing is, you don't have to dodge the question. You can tell them, oh yeah, well, I packs is a range, $5,000 to $12,000. You know, they have packages starting at $5,000 up to $12,000. So it depends on what we're you know, gonna craft for you. And I think that's important to also tell them up front, what, what are the prices? Because you don't want to dodge that. You don't want to just say, oh, they range. You want to specifically tell the customer so that they have an understanding right off the bat. Now, I still think this is fair. And I think that if you can try to come between seven and 10,000, ideally more towards the 10,000, offering the gold package is like, oh my gosh, it has so many bells and whistles. It's fantastic. Platinum package, of course, offers more, but the gold package is something that your customers are going to really, really want. And maybe they start off thinking five to seven. And then as you're adding value, as you're speaking to them and coaching them and the value of why their wedding day is so special and needs to be photographed, needs to be captured. You need to have the best of the best. They're more likely to then, of course, go for a little bit of the higher tier packages. Okay. Um, now, of course, this is wedding photography. I'm also going to get to fine art photography. I'm going to get to um, portrait photography. I'm going to get to commercial photography. We're going to talk about all different aspects of photographic um, pricing. And I'm going to kind of give you guys my perspective on this. Now, I've coached literally thousands and thousands of photographers um, over the years. I've uh, worked with thousands of photographers personally. I've coached them. I've had my photographic consultants that are on my team coach them, um, thousands of photographers. And we are help guiding our photographers in every aspect of what they can do to be able to maximize their photographic careers, being able to maximize their photographic business, being able to make enough money in their photography, being able to take it to the next level. All of that is critically important to be able to, to be a successful photographer and to be able to keep doing this because obviously you guys are photographers, you love what you do. So we got to make sure that going forward, we always can do um, all the things that we want to photographically. And if we're not making money on it, we can't sustain it. Okay, so it's really important for us to get paid what we're worth because us as photographers, we're business people and we need to be compensated. Okay, so it's very, very, very important. And of course, everybody has a different perception of value. And this is the next thing that I want to get, uh, you know, get through to you guys is the perception of value. And there's this way of like cost plus um, uh, way of pricing. And then there's also value pricing. Now, cost plus is essentially, we're going to be figuring out, okay, what are my hard costs? What is going to be the actual cost of us to do the photo shoot? For instance, say we're talking about wedding photography. Okay. There's the hard cost of, um, you know, say if I have a second shooter, I have to hire them. There's the hard cost of, um, okay, if there's a printed album, what is the cost of the printed album? Um, there is the cost, of course, of our time, how much time that we're investing in our photography. Um, how much time are we spending obtaining the client, meeting with the client, convincing them of the package that we're going to sell them on, and then maybe doing an engagement photo shoot. So all the time that goes involved with that. 
and hard costs. Maybe you also might arrange, say, a stylist or a makeup artist or something on that makeup artist on that photo shoot um, or a location, all the other costs that are involved. Um, there's also the time after the photo shoot, uh, maybe the engagement shoot of, you know, selecting through the images. There's um, editing through them. There's then retouching them and providing them for maybe they're going to use those engagement pictures for their uh, wedding invitations. OK, after that, now you have the ceremony. OK, so the ceremony is obviously a really big deal. And the, you know, the hard costs with that, with your time, with your equipment, with your staff, and then also all the time that it takes to photograph. Then there's the time in between the ceremony and the reception where you're going to be doing your, you know, your generally your setup photo shoots with your um, with the bride and the groom and their family members. And, you know, you're doing your your, you know, setup photo shoot. And of course, it's time constraint. So you're under this you know, very, very stringent time constraint from the wedding planner or the bride, um, the bridezilla you're dealing with. And then after that, you've got your um, reception, which of course, it, more hours of the day, um, and it could be even more um, cost. After all of that, you're then going to go and review the images, you're going to select the best images, and you probably shot thousands. So that takes a lot of time. And then you're going to retouch them. And then you're going to probably print an album and maybe some canvas prints. Okay, so when it is all said and done, how many hours are we spending on a wedding? I mean, it could be 30, 40, 50, 60 hours by the end of the day. It could be even more, okay, when it's all said and done. And then you want to calculate, okay, well, how much am I charging? And if you're in, and by the way, guys, um, I, I asked you this survey a little bit ago about um, how much you charge for your photography. So let's see what you guys all said. So um, if you are, uh, are doing wedding packages, um, it looks like um, those of you who do weddings are in mostly in the 2000, 4000 and 5000 range. Um, so, you know, kind of lower to middle range of pricing. So if you're and let me ask you, if you're photographing a wedding for two thousand dollars and you're spending at the end of the day when it's all said and done, you know, more than 20 hours, maybe even more than 30 hours, maybe even 40 hours or more. At the end of the day, how much are you making per hour? You know, that's, that's not that much. And at the end of the day, you might even be looking at it and being like, oh my gosh, like I'm making a minimum wage at the end of the day when, when you subtract all my costs. Okay, so um, essentially your uh, you know, cost plus, you, you take essentially the cost, then you'd mark it up with margin. Um, and that's, you know, one way to do it. Um, I honestly don't think that that's a good method. I really don't. Um, I also know that photographers charge hourly. I think that's a terrible method. And I wouldn't recommend it for various reasons. Because first of all, I don't want to trade my time for money. I'm not interested in that. I don't want to trade my time for money. I want to create something spectacular for my clients. I want to wow and dazzle them. And I want to create a moment that is an art piece. It is something that's going to stick with them for the rest of their lives. Because that, that's one of the biggest investments that any individual makes, um, you know, in their personal life and especially in their own photography, images of themselves as their wedding, right? So I want to be able to bring to the table a value that's so over the top, it's so incredible that it's worth it. It's worth what I charge. And that, and that charge should be something that's based upon the value that you're bringing to the table with the client, okay? so. Instead of like a cost plus method or instead of an hourly method, which again, the hourly method, another, another fatal flaw with that is then you're under time restrictions. Because if the client's like, okay, I've only I'm allocated $300 an hour and I'm going to allocate, you know, four hours, you know, that's the length that you need to be there, that the ceremony and maybe some setup shots afterwards and maybe a tiny bit of the reception, you know, we're going to go cheap and we're going to just get that. Okay. So now look at that, right? You know, and it's $300 an hour say. Now you're looking at, um, you know, you're looking at what, 1200, 1200 bucks for that. And you're also under this time constraint so that if you go longer, you take a little bit longer to shoot, then the you're going to get hassled by the customer. Um, they're going to be like, hey, you know, looking at their watch, like, let's get going. You've got hey, severe time constraints. And I also know a lot of commercial photographers that do this too. They do the hourly rate. Never do that. That's a terrible idea because it puts you in a bind and it also kind of encourages the customer to abuse you. And I don't think that that's a good idea, you know? And then it also discourages going the extra mile because if you want to go the extra mile and produce this amazing photography that might take longer, but then of course it's going to cost them more, 
And then they're getting upset and they don't really understand. So there's a, there's a lot of challenges that come with that. And I wouldn't recommend it. I think it's a, it's not a, a good strategy and it's essentially a race to the bottom. And I don't want that. I don't want you guys on a race to the bottom. I want you guys all the way rising to the creme de la creme, right to the top. That's very important to me. I want you guys to be as successful as possible. Okay. So what I would suggest, my strong recommendation, and I've seen this work time and time again for photographers all over the world is to be able to have a value-based pricing system. And what I mean by that is say we're setting up a package, what are you what do you feel like the value that you can bring to the table? What do you feel like that's worth? And I would assess it based upon what you think you're worth and what the highest tier photographers in the area or in maybe the high tier areas are charging. You know, so there are photographers that are making $15,000 per wedding on a regular basis. And the reason that people are booking them is because they're adding so much value. Now, it could be because they have, they're a world-class name, like maybe they're a, a world-class fashion photographer that also happens to shoot weddings. It could be because they've um, built relationships with all the wedding planners in Manhattan or in Beverly Hills. And, you know, those wedding planners would almost wouldn't feel comfortable sharing a photographer that charges for $2,000 for a wedding because it would almost be an insult to the customer because the higher tier clients, they don't want some low end photographer charging $2,000 a wedding. They want it. They want that world-class photographer. They want that published photographer. They want that photographer that is more so a world-class fashion photographer that just happens to shoot weddings. So, you know, and, and, and I want to follow up on that because if you are a photographer and you're photographing um, weddings, what is your competition, right? What is your competition out there for what the clients are looking for? Well, I can tell you the competition is they're essentially every single bride. And I mentioned this on one of my past webinars. Every single bride is looking at bridal covers of magazines. They're looking, and if you look, type in bridal magazine um, in Google, you'll pull up all these covers of the knot, brides, brides guide, all this. They're all celebrities or they're supermodels on the cover of magazines. Okay. So if you're competing with the, you're competing because every photographer, every client that's getting married is looking at these magazines. If your photography doesn't live up to what they're looking at every single day, then you're kind of losing the battle already. You've got to bring enough value. So great if you have celebrities in your book or at least having top models or supermodels in your portfolio. Brand yourself is not just an everyday traditional wedding photographer. Brand yourself as a world-class fashion photographer that happens to shoot weddings. Bring more value to the table. And it's not just, oh, I, you know, shoot with a, you know, with a Leica or I, you know, I shoot with a medium format camera. So that adds value. No, it doesn't. The customer doesn't care. It's not about what kind of lighting equipment you have. Oh, I shoot with Profoto as opposed to Alien Bees. That doesn't matter. The customer is still unaware. It's who you are and what the brand is that you're bringing and the value that you can bring to the table to make these brides feel like they're celebrities on their day. Maybe add some value by building relationships with bridal magazines and see if you could actually get a shoot with your bride in the cover of a magazine or in an editorial, right? That would be adding some value. And the way to do that, of course, these bridal magazines are only going to work with you if you're more so a world-class fashion photographer that happens to shoot weddings. So adding a lot of value to the table will massively increase how much you're, you're justified in charging for the value-based pricing system. And that would be what I would strongly recommend, right? So we talked about that earlier, you know, on the low end, maybe $5,000 package up to 12,000. Um, you know, in this market, I'm in um, in Hermosa Beach. This is one of the wealthiest areas in the in the country. I would actually say it's more so 7,500 to, to 15,000 would be more fair in this area. And I don't think that that's unusually high. I would say that that's a good range. So, um, but nationwide, I would say, you know, the, the five to, you know, to 12 or so would, would be fair. And also you guys, in addition to this, um, we could also add value to the table by maybe shooting video. Maybe we're not just shooting photography, but we're also doing epic video. 
incredible video content that's going to wow and dazzle that bride. And it's going to make them super excited and want to go with you. You know, it's what is going to make that, that bride and groom going to completely fall in love with you and your photography, you know? So for instance, this is a, you know, bridal fashion shoot done at my 49 room, 13th century castle in France with this, you know, gorgeous, beautiful scenario. This is something that you could pitch to, um, you know, to, to a bride. If you had content like this that you could showcase, I think that you'd be more likely to book that opportunity and be able to justify charging more for your photography. So instead of charging $2,000 or $4,000 or $5,000 a package, why not $7,500, $10,000, $12,000? Because you're a world-class photographer, a world-class fashion photographer, happens to shoot weddings. You could provide high-end video um, sequences. And even if you don't shoot video, that's totally fine. You could also bring a camera operator in to do it for you, or you can learn from us and um, get involved uh, with, you know, one of these elite photographic workshops. And this is why, you know, we are over the last 14 years, the most elite photographic workshop worldwide is because our photographers, including portrait, wedding, fashion, commercial, swim, um, and fine art photographers, they are taking it to the next level because they're building a body of work that is value add. That's literally the point of what we're doing. It's building this body of work that's value add. Like for instance, our French castle experience. I mean, we just had, um, uh, I believe like three photographers enroll in this in the last couple of days. Um, this is a epic workshop at my 49 room, 13th century castle in France. Um, it's unbelievable experience, September 3rd through 8th. And we're bringing in supermodels from Milan and Paris. We're bringing all these incredible um, designer um, gowns as well as handmade, custom made um, dresses that are period piece from the King Louis XIV era and Renaissance. And we're going to be doing this unbelievable, ridiculous and over the top production that is going to be out of this world. And you get to stay at a castle in France which is insane. So bringing, doing something like that, doing an experience like this, which I know many of you guys right now that are coming to this epic experience are on this webinar right now, you guys are in for a treat because the experience that you're going to have, the production level and the scale of what you're going to create, it's at such a high level that it'll give you the opportunity to not just be you know, an everyday portrait or wedding photographer or everyday you know, a lower end fashion photographer, but to become a world-class fashion photographer that happens to shoot weddings or portraits or a world-class fashion photographer that gets booked on shooting for Burberry or Giorgio Armani or Versace and be able to shoot the campaigns. The whole point of the photography workshop series is to help photographers empower you to give you that opportunity to shoot the greatest images of your lifetime and then be able to leverage that and to be able to increase your pricing for your photography, your value added pricing so that you can be based upon, you can be gauged and judged by your clientele based upon the quality of your work and not based on your price as a commodity. And that is key and critical. And it's something that I would really hope that you guys start pursuing. And I strongly recommend you get involved in some of our elite experiences because it literally will transform your entire photographic business and it'll give you the justification to photograph cl with clients where you can charge substantially more money and in the end, earn more money, make more money, make larger profit margins. And at the end of the day, be a far more financially successful photographer. And I think that that's very, very important. So um, I, and, and of course, one of the things is, is if you want to shoot higher tier clients, you've also have to invest in that portfolio. And this is something that um, many of you guys, you know, you you want to, you know, you you want to charge your customers. You might want to charge your customers several thousand dollars for a photo shoot, but oftentimes you don't invest in your own portfolio and value add that you really need to be able to book those clients, right? Now, the video we're looking at right now, this is actually um, shot in New York. We shot with supermodels uh, that have been in Vogue, Harper's Bazaar. We shot with a Vogue stylist. We shot at a forty million dollar mansion in Greenwich, Connecticut. And we did this unbelievable five-day massive scale production. And this is a popular workshop for wedding photographers, for instance, because even though it's fashion, they want to be able to build a body of work that they can market themselves as a world-class fashion photographer that happens to shoot weddings. And we even had 
Uh, an example of this, I had this amazing photographer, Veronica Jankowski, who, um, you know, she's a wedding photographer in the New York area and really wanted to take it up a notch and start charging more for her photography. And she was like, but how do I do that? You know, if I charge more, I'm going to scare these clients away. And I say, that's fantastic. I want you to scare your clients away because those aren't the clients you want. You need to start attracting the clients that you want, the high-end clients, the ones that are willing to spend $15,000 on a wedding photography. So Veronica shot this at our New York workshop with a Vogue supermodel, um, uh, Ginger Punaskaya. And then we shot with this unbelievable white um, gown that you know all resembles a wedding dress. We shot at a castle designed to be identical to King Henry VIII's palace from the 1500s and in Long Island. And it was an unbelievable experience. Got her published, cover of vintage New York City magazine, told this incredible story and she was able to now justify charging more money for her photography. And this is what I'm talking about, guys, is investing in yourself so that you can have that value add when you walk away from that five-day photographic experience and you have supermodels in your book and you can show in also getting published because every single one of our photographic workshops gets published in a national or international published magazine and winning awards, that is huge value add where it can justify how you can increase your pricing. So instead of charging two or four thousand dollars, maybe you can start charging seventy five hundred, ten thousand, twelve thousand, maybe even fifteen thousand dollars for that wedding photography. So it's a value based system. And then on top of that, if you offer video, you saw this beautiful video content. And by the way, all the images and video you're seeing here are shot by photographers that are attending these experiences. Now, I'm there to art direct, produce, and direct, and to work with them personally, but they're shot by our photographers, by our attendees, and that's a really incredible experience. So anyway, so I encourage you guys to, um, to answer the survey, you know, how much do you guys have to invest in your photographic portfolio and your photographic brand? Because if you want to increase your pricing, which I assume everybody on here does, it's vitally important to increase the value add that you're bringing to the table. Because if you just say, hey, I'm going from $2,000 and I'm going to charge $10,000 now, but you don't have a massive transformation of your brand and value add, your clients and even future clients who go out off uh, after are going to be like, ah, what the heck? You know, this guy, what is he thinking? Just They're just going to quadruple their prices for no reason. You have to give them a reason. So this is your reason. You develop a world-class body of work with supermodels, a 40-image cohesive body of work. Also, a high-end video reel shot with 8K cameras using gimbals as well as aerial drones and creating this mind-blowing content that you can start marketing yourself and pricing your photography to what it is justified at. And that's very, very important, guys. And I know this because I've done this myself. And, I, you know, and there was even a, a great photographer named Nick Seth Smith, and I'm not sure if Nick is on this webinar at the moment, but he is an amazing photographer. Um, he transitioned into photography like many of you guys. He started from a different career, and later in life, he got into photography, um, and he came to our elite masterclass. Now, Nick was like, yeah, you know, I understand, uh, you know, it came from a business standpoint. So he's like, you know what, I want to see the ROI. So he was like, I got to see how this is going to you know, the, the value that I get from the workshop, how it's going to return for me in the real world. So he came to our elite masterclass and he created mind blowing content. I mean, we shot with these supermodels. We shot with unbelievable water studios. We shot with 1940s fighter planes, like you see here, getting our photographers published and winning number one fashion photographer in the world award from this workshop. And then Nick Seth Smith, who also won in the One Island Awards in the top 10 fashion photographers in America. And this is, I believe, you know, one of his first workshops he attended. Not only did he shoot this mind-blowingly gorgeous image, and by the way, it's a fashion image, it's not wedding. But Nick booked a $20,000 wedding after this photo shoot because of this picture. He showed this to high-end clients in Los Angeles and they were wowed and dazzled. They thought it was something unique and different. And they're like, Nick, you're amazing. I want to book you. This image is what did it. Then that client ended up booking them. They had like a relative of that client that he met at the wedding that then booked him on another $20,000 wedding. $40,000 off of this one picture. And I'm sure it's counting because that was like last year. So it's counting. And that is what I'm proud about. I want to see photographers like you guys succeed and be able to do the same thing. 
And thank you guys for um, answering in the polls. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm also going to bring on um, an amazing uh, panelist who was actually there and attended this specific workshop, was there in person, um, and was there um, while creating these amazing images. Um, and I'd love uh, to hear from her perspective as well. Um, but guys, this is an experience of a lifetime. And I want to make sure that pricing is going to be something that you feel matches the value that you bring to the table of the clients. Okay, it's got to be matching the value that you bring to the table. So if we can increase your value, you can increase your pricing. Very, very important. Okay, so um, and if you guys have any questions on that, and, and, and as far as, um, you know, uh, wedding packages, pricing, any of that stuff, um, I would love, 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 love to hear it. Um, and David Koblitz asked, you left out overhead. I actually, David, no, I, I, I brought up overhead um, on every aspect of uh, what we talked about. It's the extra costs. It's the cost involved with equipment, costs involved with um, everything involved with with all aspects of your overhead. You should also, you know, if, especially if you're doing anything as far as commercial photography, which we're going to get to shortly, it, there's also the overhead of um, insurance. There's the overhead of if you've got a studio, there's the overhead of, um, you know, all the, uh, the lighting equipment. But I did talk about that, David, and I do think it's really important to uh, estimate what your overhead is so that you can price yourself accordingly. Because you got to make sure you're making a significant profit at the end of the day. Otherwise, it's not worth it. Okay. Um, so, you know, for instance, for me, when I get hired on a photographic job, I do not pick up my camera for under $30,000. It's not worth it for me otherwise. It's just, there's so much work involved in a commercial production because I only shoot commercially. And it's, I don't even want to bother if it's less than that. And you get asked for smaller scale productions and I just pass them off to my photographers um, that, that I work with. But I, um, but as far as for me, I just, there's, I'm so busy and I've, I've had a very, um, I've been fortunate to have a very successful career. You know, I shoot for Burberry, I shoot for Pepsi, I shoot for Giorgio Armani, I shoot a lot of big brands. Um, but my average, my average, price, my average sale, my average um, project is six figures, is around $100,000 on average. Some of them are more, some of them are less, but on average, it's about $100,000 for a two-day shoot. And that's something that uh, that I um, I feel it runs within the general gamut of the going pricing for commercial photography. And if you guys are giving away your commercial photography uh, and charging a lot less, then that's a problem. We need to start to rectify that. And, you know, we can learn more about that because we have an epic photographic virtual workshop specifically on booking more clients and closing the deal. And it also entails all aspects of usage fees, creative fees, and it's a six hour intensive on how to master all aspects of that. Um, so if that's something that you guys uh, you know, feel like is going to be a benefit to you. Um, that is something that it's a 12, it's 1295 to attend. Um, and you guys would get a $300 discount by uh, attending this webinar right now. So it's a really awesome, awesome opportunity. So if you guys are um, uh, also interested in learning more and, be, and getting on one-on-one -on -one, uh, to go over your pricing, we're offering a free one-on-one -on -one strategy session to go over your pricing, your packages, and your business with one of our elite photographic consultants. So if that's something that you feel could benefit you in some way, um, it's something that we are going to be offering totally free, um, no obligation. And it's just something that me as um, you know, uh, somebody who deeply cares about our photographers, I want you to have this free coaching that my team offers. And it's a great opportunity. It's something that, you know, if you guys want to, um, you know, take it up a notch, you know, and become a more successful photographer, it's something that I want to help you with. I want you guys to be the best versions of yourself and to be the most successful photographers out there. There's no reason not to. And you just got to start thinking about the competition as real competition. The competition is yourself. The competition is how well you can market yourself. The competition is why aren't you getting out there every single day and charging what you feel like you deserve? Why aren't you charging $100,000 on a photo shoot? You know, is there a reason? You know, maybe the value that you're showcasing doesn't meet that, or maybe you're just, it's a self-confidence thing and you don't feel like, you know, you're ready or you don't feel like you deserve it or whatever. I hear that a lot too. Um, but I tell you what, you do deserve it. It's just a matter of the value that you bring to the table. It's got to be justified. 
it's got to be it's got it's got to be shown because we're visual people guys and we need to showcase the value that we bring to the table and i know the value that i bring now let's talk about why the value why that value means something now okay i'm just i'm putting in the chat um the link and this is uh, to go ahead and book a free one-on-one -on -one momentum session with a professional photographic consultant, somebody on my team that I work personally with. And this is to go over your own pricing structure, your own pricing and packages, and to talk about your business strategy. Okay. Now, and I'm going to actually, and I want you guys to all stick around because I'm also going to be showcasing some actual pricing and invoicing that I've done on commercial campaigns. And we're going to go over the bids um, in detail today and talk about them so that you guys can see a real life major campaign and what the budgets are okay and what that's all about um so that you guys can also understand that and if you guys get on one of these one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions we should also um share with you some of the stuff and some of the secrets on how to all do all of this as well now the value that we bring to the table especially as a commercial photographer guys you got to start thinking about what how much is a client making on the job? There's a reason that clients are booking you. There's a reason that Burberry books me. There's a reason that Pepsi books me, right? It's because they're marketing themselves and they're trying to obtain more business, larger revenue. So there's a direct correlation between advertising and increase in revenue, right? So within advertising, they're going to hire creatives. They're going to generally hire an advertising agency. And the advertising agency is going to hire um, photographers and illustrators, designers, um, copywriters that write the, the text and everything like that. And the when they hire a photographer or a director to film a commercial, they're hiring a creative to, you know, basically showcase, create a story around their brand that will convince people to buy. That's what it's about, right? Convincing the client to buy. So I know that the value that I bring to the table is convincing the client to buy and making my client millions of dollars, right? Millions of dollars. That's just on revenue. But then there's also the cost of um, how much they're earning, um, not, not just how much they're earning, but how much they're spending on the media placement, okay? Now, this is important. And I believe that a lot of you guys are missing the boat on media placement. And what I mean by that is essentially um, going in depth with a commercial client, not just on your creative fee, because that's your photographer fee. And photographer fees, guys, with pricing, they can range, but oftentimes they range anywhere. I, most photographers do it anywhere from $2,000 to $20,000. I would say an average is usually five dollars to $10,000 per day for a commercial photographer, photographer fee on average. Okay. So typically it, it can range, but it, it, that it, it's five to $10,000 a day as a photographer fee. And that's your photographer fee or your creative fee. Okay. On the production. But you might ask, okay, well, if my fee is $5,000, then, uh, you know, how do you get, um, you know, a hundred thousand dollars out of the whole budget or $200,000 out of the budget? Where is that coming from? Right. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to show you. This is uh, a campaign for a fashion lifestyle brand. Um, and uh, this is one of, of mine. Um, and this showcases uh, all the production estimates and terms. This is a 27 page proposal. Um, and uh, this is with my production company, Indigo Productions. And this shows you um, the full scale budget. Okay. And as you can see here, now this one I'm, I'm listed as a director. $5,000 a day for four days. That's two filming days, one pre-production day, one post-production day, okay? So $5,000 a day. This is literally what I just mentioned, guys. That's average, right? So if my fee is $5,000 a day, right? But at the end of the bid, at the end of the actual um, uh, estimate here, $194,340 is the total production budget, okay? So these are, this is a two-day shoot and it's $194,000. And this is, you know, I, I would say, uh, you know, we talked about my average is about 100,000. This is obviously a bit more on the higher end, um, but these, these budgets can range. I mean, I know photographers that are shooting $750,000 campaigns. 
Um, there's a photographer, Dave Hill in LA that shoots $750,000 campaigns. And I know the details of that because I know the creative executive creative director from Sapient Razorfish, uh, Mario Gomez, who actually spoke about it candidly because he's the one who booked him on all these jobs. He shot, I think he hired him on like seven of those shoots. Really amazing, proud of him, fantastic. Um, so anyway, this the budgets are a lot bigger than you think. Now, there's a reason though that this budget is so high. Now, oftentimes, you know, remember, we're, we're talking about not just creative fee, but we also have to think about how much they're spending on the media placement, okay? And that is oftentimes um, where the big money comes in. And I, there's always a rule of thumb of generally, um, you know, I would say 10% of media buy is fair. So you're charging a media buying fee. There's, there is another thing we can do is actually charge a media buying fee or at least a usage fee. Most photographers and directors charge a usage fee. Okay. So um, in this case, this is essentially like a usage fee, broadcast quality, commercial video, creative fee. It's essentially my, um, my usage fee. That's $60,000 for the usage, because I know the actual media buy is very large. It's, you know, it's, it's in the millions. So I'm going to charge this off the top. I'm going to charge a usage fee. Then I'm going to uh, charge my uh, photographer fee or director's fee. But in this case, it's $5,000 for four days. Um, and that's because there's only two shoot days, but then there's a pre-production and a post-production. So make sure you get paid for that. Very, very important. Okay. So, um, and oh, and, and by the way, um, uh, Karen Hirsch asks, does $100,000 include model fees and stylist fees, props, et cetera, or is that net profit? No, absolutely. That, that includes everything, Karen. So um, this is why during the, um, the closing the deal workshop, uh, booking more clients and closing the deal, we actually go in depth about how to maximize profits within that $100,000 budget, or in this case, $194,000 budget. How do we maximize profits? At the end of the day, on this budget, um, I believe my profit is about 130,000 at the end of the day. Okay. And that's pretty high because a lot of photographers don't go that high. A lot of times they miss the boat and they, uh, there's a bunch of costs that add up that they don't bill for, or they don't make enough profit because they're just trying to desperately get the job. Um, but for me, I'm very savvy when it comes to the bid and making sure that I'm making the highest profitability within the campaign. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, Eduardo Alteran asks in commercial phot photography, how you start uh, charging for two day shooting. That's a good question. So that's essentially Eduardo, um, because the parameters and the scope of the photo shoot or the, or the production, um, is two days. Like we, we can't do it all in one day. So we, you have to figure that out. Like how many locations, um, how many models are you shooting? Um, you know, we, we need to discover how, you know, how complex the shoot is. And when you ask those questions up front, we can start to understand the scale of it. But you'll also see there's all these costs, right? And there's all this um, production costs with um, lighting equipment, with cameras. And by the way, guys, whether you're doing a video shoot or a, or a photo shoot, always, if it's commercial, always charge for your equipment. And this is why I always talk to photographers that are like, you know, oh, hey, like I want to invest in my portfolio, but instead I'm going to buy this new camera or I'm going to buy this new lens. Well, I can tell you that in my entire career, okay, my entire career, I've been photographing for 20 years, okay, my entire career, I've never been asked once by a client what camera I'm shooting with. I've never been asked once by a client, what lens are you shooting with? I've never been asked by a client, what, what brand of lighting equipment are you shooting with? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I'm shooting with, you know, a Canon camera or a medium format camera, or I'm shooting with, um, you know, or if it's pro photo equipment or alien it doesn't really matter. But there's a reason that I do shoot with specific equipment. And that is not because of the client. It's because, and it's not just because I care about the brand. It's because that's what is the going, you can, you can find a going rate at any rental house in your area. So if you're in LA, for instance, we, I go to like Sammy's camera, I get the rental um, cost for say a um, pro photo um, uh, power pack. And, you know, okay, I might need four of those. Um, and then, you know, maybe eight heads, um, you know, and I get the going rate for what Sammy's camera charges. And since pro photo is a common one, I know that every rental house in America 
uh, the major ones will have a standard price list for pro photo. So when I go back to my client and I itemize it and I price everything out, it's very clear and I'm being very honest about it. This is the going rate. I'm renting this pro photo gear. But what they don't know is I'm renting it for myself. And that's totally standard practice. So I have a separate company that owns all my equipment and I, Kevin Michael Schmidt's photography, rent my equipment for myself. And that's my way of making a huge profit margin off of all of this, right? Because now I'm making money, not on the, just on the creative fee and on the usage fee, but also on my equipment, every aspect. And I mean, everything, my lenses, my cameras, I'm renting to myself, my computer, my monitors, my um, memory cards, my um, hard drives, because those are costs. So I, I carry that on to the customer. So I'm going to be using those costs anyways, right? I, I mean, I'm going to be spending those anyways. So might as well pass that on to the customer. And of course, if you don't do this, if you don't do this, then the clients, especially commercial clients, are going to be very concerned. They're going to be like, wait a minute. Like, you don't know what you're doing because the three other people that are bidding on this campaign, they're all quoting the equipment costs. Uh, is there some hidden cost here that you're not charging? You know, why is your quote so low? Why are you quoting in? It's 194,000. I had one guy come in at 220. I had another photographer. She came in at, you know, 175. Kevin Michael Schmitz come in, came in at 194. And then you, you know, this other photographer comes in at 80,000. Well, they're not going to choose you because you, uh, you, you lowball them with a low rate. They're going to discredit you, dis disqualify you because your rate was so low. And that's common. And the reason is, is because they, you are now a liability because they're like, wait a minute, that's not going to line up with what the true cost is and what everybody else is charging. It doesn't line up. It's not right. And I think that you don't know what you're doing. That's a common thing. Okay. Another aspect is this money is not theirs. So they don't care. They want to charge more. They want you to bill higher because they're going to do markup. They're often marketing up another 30% or 40% of the client. So if you chart, if you lowball them, then it's harder for them to, you know, they're not going to make as much margin because they're not, you know, they can only market up so much. So, uh, and they have to showcase with the client to the client, what the, you know, the, what the, their um, vendors are charging, what you're charging. So, you know, they want to make sure that you're charging a, a high enough rate that they, they can also make their margin on, if that makes sense. Very, very important. Okay. Um, so, and, and by the way, guys, I'm going to launch another poll. How likely are you to enroll in one of these elite photographic workshops? And these are, you know, whether we have um, these epic five-day photographic experiences where you're going to photograph the greatest high-end fashion, lifestyle, um, you know, commercial images or images that work for portraiture, headshots, um, and um, pretty much any aspect of photography, we offer it all. Like we have incredible experiences. If you want to come, you know, wanted to come to the French castle and just photograph spectacular castles at, at my 49 room castle in France, we have that opportunity. Um, it is an incredible experience. So depending on what you guys want to do, we have workshop experiences for all of that. You know, so for instance, I have a lot of um, portrait photographers and commercial photographers and lifestyle photographers, as well as swim photographers that want to come to our Miami beach workshop. You know, and if you want to shoot headshots and portraits and you want to add value to your brand, shooting high-end supermodels, up close shots with beautiful faces that you'd never have access to down in Miami Beach on the lifestyle day, that'll take your brand to the next level. You could massively increase how much you're charging for your portrait photography if you have content like this. It's a total different uh, game changer. Okay. So, okay, on top of all of that, and I wanted to get to this too, is that there is there are some additional um, ways of making money and pricing yourself on top of everything I just talked about. So we're talking about this $194,000, um, you know, uh, aspect of this campaign, right? Okay. That's just the tip of the iceberg. So the, one of the ways in which I've been able to structure my businesses over time is to make real money on the campaigns, not being just a hired gun, not just being that guy that's going to be hired to photograph or be a camera operator, to be a director, or whatever. I want to also get a piece of the media buy. And the media buy is where the real money is happening. Okay. And what I mean by the media buy is the media buy is essentially where, um, you know, the client. So, you know, for instance, um, you know, if you're working with, uh, 
um, Pepsi and they're hiring and they've hired me on a, um, uh, you know, a campaign. Um, it was in the, you know, uh, hundred and I don't know, it's like $170,000 or something. And, but their media buy is going to be in the millions. They might be spending, you know, 1.5 million on that media buy the placement of the media, right? Where the photo, that photograph is going to be placed. You know, is it going to be in stores? Is it going to be on a billboard? Is it going to be in ads? Where's the placement? So I'm going to price myself accordingly and say I price myself at 10% of that, right? So you know what? 1.5 million, that means 10% of that, $150,000 in usage and creative fees. I think that that's fair because 10% of what they're spending just on the media placement, I don't think that that's unreasonable. Right. Um, and if you can't get that, at least get something, you know, above 5%. But I usually ask for 10. And I think that that's not unreasonable. I, I really don't. So I want you guys to start thinking, you know, beyond all of this so that you can start really getting into the app, you know, the opportunity of landing real big numbers, actual large scale campaigns, right? Campaigns where you're also making $194,000 on a production, or, you know, building 194,000, maybe, you know, making 130 or 140 at the end of the day, but being able to bill that for a campaign instead of just, you know, grinding away, you know, all year long making, you know, doing dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of shoots and all these different clients that are just scraping for, you know, um, every penny, I recommend going out and doing commercial advertising photography. Now, Commercial advertising photography is um, generally happy, healthy people having fun, enjoying life. People that are, it's an experiential moment. And so creating these moments that are uh, with models, oftentimes multiple models together, having interactions, having fun together, having smiles, um, having um, playfulness, jumping up and down, interacting, um, you know, ha moving, having all of this, you know, this is another example. This is from our Miami Beach workshop, which I believe is almost sold out. I think we, um, you know, and we might be on our very last spot love. This is one of the most popular workshops that we do of the year. It's in Miami Beach next month. And it's an experience of a lifetime shooting with supermodels like this, like Nastasia. Um, we had, um, you know, some of these girls are from Victoria's Secret. We had um, Alexa Collins. She's one of the biggest um, swim models in the world right now. Um, we had, um, you know, some of the best of the best of the best. Laura, um, and being able to shoot this multiple model situation, happy, healthy people having fun, enjoying life, and it's experiential. Showcasing this kind of content to a client will massively increase your value because this can be aligned with so many different things. It could be for the SLS hotel. It could be for a beverage brand. It could be for swim brand. You know, it could be all different facets of the photographic industry, right? Or if, say, um, you're not into commercial photography and you are a, um, you know, say a boudoir photographer and you wanted to shoot unbelievable, you know, lingerie or, you know, swim photography or sexy photography, our Miami Beach section also has um, a, a few days on shooting with Sports Illustrated Swim Models, shooting down to Miami Beach with some of the best of the best of the best swim talent on location. This was all shot by our attendees on location. Um, this was at Key Largo, and we're going to have some locations at Key Biscayne this year. It's going to be unbelievable with these top supermodels and creating these moments that are completely over the top. And, you know, content like this would take you up another notch. If you say you're a boudoir photographer or, a, or even a portrait photographer portrait photographer, and also commercial photographers that want to shoot for resorts or want to shoot for swim brands. This is hugely valuable and important. It has both swim and resort lifestyle at this workshop. So each day is different. Um, and as each day progresses, it gets more and more and more over the top and incredible. But this is what I'm talking about with adding more value to the client and showcasing content where you can justify increasing your pricing, which I think is really, really important. All right. Um, so uh, I also wanted to bring on um, a great panelist, um, the great Priscilla Evans. She is a production coordinator um, and all the magic, all the beauty, all the spectacular, um, everything that you see here on our website, especially, you know, at the castle. Priscilla is our production coordinator, manages all of this stuff, makes it all happen. Oh, we need a Frisian horse in, you know, in Massia en Cambrai, France. She sets it up. She had two Frisian horses, um, unbelievable, ridiculous wedding gowns, um, you know, the flowers, the models, whatever it takes, Priscilla can make it 
happen. Um, but Priscilla also, she is, she's a, one of my top photographic consultants that coaches photographers on their businesses. Now, Priscilla also coaches them on their pricing and their price structures. And oftentimes, Priscilla, I know you have a lot of photographers that you work with that really are being taken advantage of by their customers and they're not being, they're not making enough per shoot. They're charging too little. And I know that, you know, you have a lot of, you know, guidance for them. And I know oftentimes it's suggesting that they build more value. Can you talk a little bit about why adding value to their body of work by adding better content, better photography, better video can justify them charging more for their photography? Absolutely. Hey everyone, it's great to be on. This is such an important topic. This might be the most important topic, I think. You know, the nuts and bolts of why you'll either be successful and still a photographer, you know, 10, 20 years from now and on a, you know, a big um, trajectory of growth or why you'll be struggling, hopefully not, and, uh, you know, maybe not no longer doing it. So this is really important stuff. It's important to really check in, I think, regularly about pricing and um, reevaluate it year by year because you know with inflation and everything else we, it is something that's constantly evolving and constantly changing so uh yeah one thing that we we do include with um you know the workshops is we actually offer unlimited coaching one of the reasons for that is because of pricing pricing is something we should be checking in with you every year and seeing you know what what the pricing structure is looking like for this year how you're growing and where it's heading you know in the future so um, I mean, in terms of what you're showcasing and where and where that takes you, it really is everything. I think that, you know, a lot of photographers think that you're in, in the business of, you know, selling images or maybe, um, you know, selling um, your time, I should say, selling your time, you know, with that client. It really is about, you know, the sale happens way before you're even with the client. The client is going to be booking you based on the images and the content and the video and everything else that they see in your brand. So really that's where you know, the value you can add to the client, it all happens before the day. <laughs> it all happens and you should be getting paid before the day as well. So, you know, with that, within those pricing structures and, and contracts and all of that sort of thing, everything should be paid before, before the day so that, you know, there's no um, end up, you know, long struggles or, or battles with clients to try and get them, you know, get money out of them after the date. That's, that's also a crazy thing to do. Um, so if you are doing that, change it. Um, but uh, yeah, in terms of the value that you're adding, it's all about what they perceive as that value based on those conversations, like Kevin was saying, the value-based pricing contracts, um, you know, and, and options and structures. So, um, you know, if you can offer video or, you know, if that means bringing on a videographer and you're taking a piece of video home, if you're not comfortable doing video or you'd rather just be doing the still, that's a great way to add value. And certainly for a lot of, you know, um, uh, clients that are wanting like personal branding types of, of shooting, they're normally really into that. They love that. Knowing your clientele and what adding value means for them is also really important. Something we haven't talked about today is incentivizing. You know, everyone, if we think back to our, you know, our last batch of clients in the last year or the last couple of years, everyone can picture that, oh gosh, there was that one, you know, bottom 20% for sure. And he took up so much of my time, he or she, and, you know, they were just, they were, they took up my time um, in terms of uh, me convincing them of what we were doing. They were asking a lot of questions. They didn't send anyone my way afterwards. So overall, like, I wish I, you know, I don't want to have any more of them. And then we can think at the other end of the spectrum, the top 20% and the types of clients we wish we had, you know, a hundred more of. And there's ways to go back to them. You know, we often shoot with those clients, we work with them and then job done and we kind of table it, move on to the next it's really important to reconnect with those and to keep them, you know, in your, in your loop, um, you know, pretty regularly, I would say. Often it's those clients that have got friends and family that will be, you know, the next version of themselves for you. And something I would recommend adding that a lot of photographers don't, I, I don't think I've, um, I don't think I've ever seen it actually on a photographer's website. So this would be a huge point of difference um, would be to actually state and show and, and write and, you know, put it up there that, um, you know, some of the, the incentivizing strategies that you might have for those clients. So, you know, it's going to be different for each one. Some of them, you know, the wedding industry, for example, and corporate events. Hey, Maria, by the way, I see your question in the, uh, in the Q and A, and we were just chatting about this the other day. Um, but, um, you know, corporate events and weddings, the whole industry is kickbacks, referrals, you know, it's, it's scratching your back if you scratch mine. So if you can offer, you know, for your clients, um, you know, some kind of 
you know, referral plan. Some of them are going to be more interested in, in money as far as, you know, I'll send $500 your way if you send, you know, for any client that books with me for this particular package, whatever it might be. Um, and for others, they're interested in a different kind of value. Some of them are actually more interested in, you know, a free shoot or a free, you know, mini session or whatever it might be. And, um, you know, that's something that I think would be a huge point of difference to encourage those fantastic clients that we wish we had more of, you know, to send more of their friends and family your way and to maybe even come back again. So I would definitely recommend incentivizing your clients and thinking about what that looks like. For the wedding industry, what that looks like is, and corporate events too, um, you know, the, the clients, if you're going to the client and they're saying, hey, we have a, you know, a budget of X for the photographer and you know, it's like, oh, it's not worth my time. Try and look at that from a different way. Where else are also those corporate events and the event planners? Who else are they dealing with and networking within that industry? More often than not, you'll find that the wedding industry and the corporate event industry, they're taking enormous budgets to a location, for example. And you'll find that certain locations attract certain types of clients, the upper tier and the next, you know, the, the clients that can afford to pay more. Um, and with those locations, that's where the partnership and the, the communication should be happening. Something I really recommend for, you know, wedding um, photographers, corporate event photographers is go to the locations, the locations where, you know, those clients are flocking in and offer those locations a really generous kickback, you know? So if you're charging 15 grand for your weddings or your um, corporate events, offer the location five grand back. I guarantee you that if you're doing that and you're putting yourself above and you're adding more value than the photographer before you, they're going to want to book with you if you, you know, they bring you on as their in-house planner. And of course, that could mean anything. You could create a, a contract with them that means that you can say yes and no to as many of the particular jobs that they, you know, bring your way. But if you can figure out ways to incentivize and add value, however, when you have that initial conversation, they're going to decide not based on just what you're saying, but on what you can show them. So, you know, those conversations are fantastic and they're great ideas, but it's not going to lead to anything if the brand that you pull up on your screen, if it's a Zoom call or if, you know, it's a, an in-person meeting that you're showing them doesn't reflect something that justifies, you know, as Kevin was saying, those numbers. So you need to make sure that the brand is perfect, the brand is finished and the brand is done. And of course, brands are constantly evolving. We're adding to our portfolios. Some photographers add a bit too often, you know, they, they spend too much time on the website and on the reel. But once you've got at least a 40 image body of work, that's kind of industry standard these days, at least 40. And that's 40 of one category. So if you're a you know fashion photographer and you're a lifestyle commercial advertising, that's 40 for each of those different brands. Um, so, um, or at least 40. So once you've got that ready, you know, you approach those clients and you want to make sure that the reel is ready, you know, the, the website's ready. And then you go in with some of those fantastic conversations and trust me, they'll be, they'll be interested, but you've got to make sure that, you know, those priced or um, I should say the value based um, pricing really reflects and, um, you know, just further reinforces the brand and the message of the brand that you've sent through. So, so that's really, really important. Um, and I think um, I wanted to cover a couple of other things as well today. And that was, yeah, I guess some of the reasons that you should be charging more because more often than not, <laughs> the photographers that I talk to are, I guess, a little, a little nervous, maybe don't necessarily have the self-confidence to put the prices up. As you can see from, from Kevin, you know, he has unwavering self-belief and confidence in his brands. You guys should too. There's no reason that you shouldn't. And um, one thing that the workshops really do help with is, is confidence. And, you know, the time that you spend, um, you know, approaching those clients and, and having all of those conversations, even with, I would go so far as to say, the conversations with the clients that don't book with you, the time spent talking to those clients is actually something that overall, all the other paying clients should also be covering. So remember the opportunity cost, I guess, of, of the time that you're spending doing everything related to the business, researching the next camera, that's time spent on the business. So that cost needs to be absorbed and, and paid for by, by your other clients. Um, you know, if you are finding that you're getting most of your clients by word of mouth, you should definitely be charging more and you should definitely be marketing more. Word of mouth, a lot of photographers see it as, oh, it's great. I'm getting everyone word of mouth. I'm, I'm doing something right. Of course you are. However, you're also missing out on a lot of opportunity because, you know, the bigger budgets it's not necessarily going to come by word of mouth. It is going to come by showcasing and marketing, you know, pretty heavily um, the content that you've got. So be careful of, of, the, of having too many clients that are coming by word of mouth. It doesn't always mean that you're peaking. Often it means there's like 
a lot more growth that's on the table for you and a lot more opportunity that's on the table um, that you might not be necessarily getting. So with that, it kind of leads me on to like rejection. And a lot of the time, you know, we get a little bit maybe disheartened by having those higher prices when we hear a client say no. Rejection is something that we've talked about in other webinars as well. Um, on our YouTube channel, you can see a, a whole series of them dedicated to that and getting comfortable with rejection. But I want you to be not only comfortable with the rejection you're receiving, I want photographers to be comfortable rejecting certain clients as well. Not every client is worth your time. A lot of clients are actually costing you more than they'll ever make you. And it's important to consider time and, and your time and really you know, value that. Make sure that whatever it is that you're making at the end of the year, absolutely more than covered all that time that you spent, you know, up late at night researching or talking to a client or whatever it might be. So make sure that it covers that. Um, and I guess in terms of, um, you know, the brand and what you're showcasing, if you are wanting to, to know what your, your brand is worth, you know, by all means, you know, click on one of the links in, in the chat, because sometimes it is really helpful to, to hear from an outside source, what you feel like, you know, you should be worth. Um, and, uh, you know, to tell me that and let's see if it's, hey, reinforced by the brand or what more we could be doing to make sure that it is in the future. Well, that's brilliant, uh, Priscilla. Um, and with with adding the value to the brand, how much do you think after a workshop, how much do you see typically a photographer should increase how much they're charging for their photography? Say if they're a portrait or wedding photographer, how much do you normally see um, as a strong suggestion for what they should increase on their pricing? Yeah, that, that depends. I mean, if you're if you're charging something that's, um, I would say, I mean, it depends on the range that you're in. Easily, you should be jumping up into the thousands, you know, for your clients easily. Um, if you're adding content from, you know, workshops, you easily could. Um, you know, if you're open to traveling, if you're open to reaching, you know, different markets, easily it could be that. I've had photographers that are tripling, you know, what they're charging instantly afterwards. And often we'll plan for that. So we'll actually, before the workshop, I'll work with them to have, you know, print promo pieces or email blasts and things ready to go, waiting for the content that, is anticipating those price, you know, hikes as well. So um, it really depends on where you're at. Definitely, it, it could easily be tripling if you're, you know, somewhere in the in the lower tier of pricing at the moment. Um, but there's a lot of ways to be, you know, some photographers also want to be working a lot less, but then charging a lot more, which is, um, you know, also fantastic. And that could be mean anything. It could mean a ten times, you know, the budgets you're making right now. So it really, just depends on on where you're at. And just with some of the questions that are in here that I can uh, race through as well and help help answer. Um, let's see here. Uh, Deborah, so how do you adjust your bidding for nonprofits? That's an interesting one. Um, nonprofits are an interesting industry and can often be a little shady. Um, depends on what the nonprofit organization is. Kevin, um, I might get you to add to that. Um, my initial reaction would probably be, uh, you know, to either keep it the same or maybe even go <laughs> higher. Um, lots of reasons for that. I'd love to know more about specifically the nonprofits that you're you're targeting, um, and then uh, Maria, you said that you know typically an event, in corporate event photography, that the client is looking for the lowest bid. Again, you know, like we talked about the other day, pivot that model and let's go to the locations, let's go to the other areas of the industry that those corporate events are finding their photographers, especially you know the bigger budget events. There's plenty of Fortune 500 companies that spend millions on events every year, and as a photographer, you should be getting a piece of that, <laughs> a big piece of that. Um, perfect. And then, uh, Kevin, I think there's some questions on media bio, which I'll throw your way. They definitely, as a hospitality photographer, you definitely should be getting a piece of media buy. I mean, hotels and resorts, that's most of the television commercials, you know, that we see hotels, resorts, cruises, um, food and beverage often media buy for hotels and resorts has the potential to be, to be huge. And particularly with hotels and resorts, you know, if you can land some of those vertically integrated companies where there's a whole lot of them and they want the entire, you know, chain to have similar branding and have a similar feel, they often love having, you know, the same photographer work across the brand with different hotels and resorts. Um, and yeah, I'll throw the rest across to you, Kevin. Fabulous. That was absolutely brilliant, Priscilla. And thank you for all of your insight. Um, 
into all aspects of pricing and value add, uh, what they gain after one of these epic photographic workshops. Um, and thank you so much for everything you do because it, Priscilla is what makes all of this magical. Um, behind the scenes, every, all the incredible production and stuff, Priscilla is uh, the genius behind it. So um, anyway, thank you so much. And if you guys wanna set up a one-on-one -on -one photographic strategy session, the link is in the chat. I also have, um, uh, links in there. If you guys did want to enroll in the um, booking more clients and closing the deal workshop, um, which is an epic workshop that uh, will teach you all aspects of um, how to price yourself as far as uh, in the details of media buy for six hours straight. And it's an incredible experience. Um, also, guys, um, yeah, I'm going to answer some of these questions because these are some fantastic ones. Um, Brian Page asked, asked a great question. Methods of payment leveraging brand for publicity, pricing based on location, and how to be a national photographer. Excellent question, Brian. Um, absolutely love it. First of all, methods of payment, you guys, I if you are shooting anything on the consumer market, if you're doing portraiture, you're shooting um, boudoir, you're shooting um, weddings, I always love to take credit cards, okay? Credit cards are safe, credit cards are quick and you don't have to deal with um, waiting on a check, okay? Um, you don't have to worry about checks bouncing. Um, we don't have to deal with, um, you know, any of these uh, issues that people come up with, you know? Um, and also if you are gonna do installments, like say it's a, you know, $10,000 wedding and say you got a deposit and then you, you know, wanted to set up another installment or whatever, you don't have to wait for that money to come in. You can just have that uh, credit card that you can bill at a later point. So my strong recommendation, Brian, is a credit card. Now, of course, there are credit card fees, um, anywhere from 2% to 3%, depending on um, what your uh, credit card merchant services is. But if you guys do not have merchant services set up already, all, every single person on here needs to set up a merchant services account. Now, of course, there's Stripe, and Stripe is a simple one, um, but I think it's kind of a standard, kind of fairly high fee. I want to say it's more around 3% or so. I, I think that's high. Um, I would recommend um, Shop Around, and there's a lot of great merchant services out there. There's hundreds of them. Um, and uh, I use one called Merchant One, um, and I've been with them for, um, I don't know, 15 years or something, and they've been fantastic. Um, I think that's a great method of accepting payments. And it's very, very safe, both for the consumer um, and for the merchant. Um, you can, of course, take check, but I only do that more so for commercial campaigns, if it's a corporate or business check. Um, but generally, more times than not, I would say about 80% of the time on a commercial campaign, it's always bank transfer, wire transfers. So we rarely do deal with um, checks in the mail. It's almost always a wire transfer. Now, um, this is another good question because uh, in that budget, that $194,000, what I always do, and I strongly recommend you guys this with pricing, is not only does your pricing need to be um, uh, need to be correct, but also need to make sure that you get your money up front. Because if it's $194,000 and say I have you know $50,000 of hard costs, meaning models and stylists and equipment and things like that, um, I'm not going to float that for the client, meaning I'm not going to just, you know, hire all those people without having money in my bank account first. And a lot of, I, I see this mistake happen a lot. Photographers, they get all excited about a job and then they float the budget of the production, meaning they don't get the money until afterwards, which is insane. So what I always say is you should take at least, you should always take 100% of creative fees and usage fees up front. So if my creative and usage, you know, say is $80,000 or something, um, I would take that up front. So, and that's pretty standard, 100% of creative and usage up front um, upon, I'm sorry, 100% uh, of production costs up front and 50% of creative fees and usage um, uh, upon delivery of the content. That's generally how I do it. Sometimes they'll do like a net 30, net 60, or net 90. Um, that's obviously not my preference, but every company has a different situation. You know, when I'm dealing with shooting campaigns for Miller Lite or Coors Light, uh, they generally were, I think, maybe 60 days after the shoot, they would they would pay the remaining balance. But always 100% of production costs, meaning costs for basically everything other than your usage and creative fee when media buy. And then everything else, your media buy, creative fee, all of that stuff in, in usage should be 50% um, upfront, 50% on, in my opinion, I think it should be upon delivery of the content. So I don't have to wait for any money after the fact. That way you're safe. 
you always have your money up front and you don't ever get shafted by the client. Now, it's very rare that a big commercial client would shaft you, but if it's a small client, and many of you guys who do like branding photography for clients, they like to screw photographers all the time, you know, and especially if it's a smaller job, it's a $5,000 job or something or $10,000 job. I hear these stories every day from photographers, uh, ones that I coach even, that they get shafted by the customers. You know, so don't be shafted by your customers. Be get payment up front, and also don't even set up the shoot until you have payment up front. You know, like for instance, um, if, if you know if I'm bidding on a job and it's a say it's a hundred thousand dollar job, um, I'm not even going to start producing. I'm not even going to start calling agents, modeling agencies. I'm not even going to set anything up or file for film permits or anything until that money it, it, they agreed on it, signed a contract, and the money is in my bank account. You know, once that. You know, say it's a hundred thousand dollar shoot, and um, you know, say sixty eight thousand between the creative usage, um, fifty percent of that, and then hundred percent of production costs is, you know, say sixty eight thousand is in my bank account. I'm not going to start working on it until the money is in my bank account. Very important, and I'd recommend you guys all do it that way. So, um, and I and I have those terms in my contracts. So, um, you know, it's very very clear. So I have, um, uh, and I'll even I'll even show you guys um, the terms of my agreements that I have, um, you know, I, um, in fact, I'm going to showcase to you guys, um, this stuff on, uh, some of my, uh, actual campaigns. Um, and I will actually show you the license and the, um, the terms. So that way, um, your job description, um, your terms, usage license, and this is your broadcast cable TV spots for Lifetime, Bravo, OWN, BET, Gala, cable streaming, social media, um, including Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and website to market for one year. All usage will be billed to the client at a standard rate of 15% of the total media buy for usage or the content um, uh, uh, from Indigo Productions for licensing. So basically what that's saying is that uh, they're buying um, they have an initial media buy from me, but um, the media usage has to be purchased at 15% of the media buy going forward when they do the media buy. And um, that way, you know, when they do their $2 million media buy, I'm making 15% of that. Plus, I'm going to get a 10%. So that's a 15% of the total media buy for usage, then a 10% media buying fee because instead of going through an ad agency, I'm doing this directly. So I make a phone call over to um, uh, Spectrum Reach uh, or um, you know any of the uh, cable networks that, um, that, that handle this. Um, cable Spectrum Reach is the one here in Los Angeles. Um, and we do a media buy nationally. Ampersand does national. So I would usually use Ampersand. And I, in this case, I did. And then they basically, um, I negotiate on the back end also an additional 10 to 15% so that on top of that, you know, effectively I'm making 45% on the back end or 45% total, I should say. So 15% um, of the back end, 15% media buy for usage, and then another 10% for the media buying fee. So 25% um, on the upside, 15% of the back end because I've negotiated with Ampersand. So I'm making 40% 40 40 of the $2 million media buy. And that's what I would recommend. Okay. So, um, and then on the, um, the licensing, um, that it's very, very clear. So 10% of media buy and 15% for usage. Um, and then, um, estimates valid for 10 days. And then we talk about when all the money is due hundred percent of production expenses are due upon booking 50% of the creative, be, uh, creative fees due upon delivery, um, of the initial footage to the client 50%, um, upon, uh, the balance after 15 days. So that's, that's the terms that they wanted. Um, and that's pretty standard. So excellent uh, questions, the other guys. Okay, so um, uh, Mark Farwell asks, hi, Priscilla, we never know the media buy for a hotel. Why not? Ask them, Mark. I mean, there's no reason that they shouldn't tell you what the media buy is for the hotel. So, um, I mean, that's a question you should always ask. Um, and, um, and if they won't tell you, there's ways of kind of figuring it out, right? So essentially find out where they're placing the media. Is the media going to be on billboards? Is it going to be just in the hotel, uh, like on, um, uh, you know, is it if you're doing video, is it going to be on the the um, the hotel um, televisions? Is it going to be on? Um, are you going to be in print media on print magazines? Uh, where is the media going to be? You know, um, so I would figure that out, and then it's pretty easy to find because you can look online and find out what the through the media kits of where they're going to place these ads of how much it is, how much it costs per ad and find out how many of these ads. So they won't tell you, then you can actually just do a little investigation and find it out yourself. Oftentimes, the lot more than you think it is. 
you know, hotels tend to be kind of cheap when it comes to, you know, up front with photographers. They're just like, oh yeah, we don't have any money. That's not true. These photo these these um hotel chains are spending billions of dollars on marketing. They're just not spending it on you. <laughs> so you want a bigger piece of the pie, Mark. And um, and in Asia, it is like that in Asia as well. Okay. Um, you know, they they you know, they might be able to get away with more because they have they might deal with more of the Asian photographers that are um maybe um open to just taking whatever but as a um you know as a knowledgeable photographer from the, from talking from an american standpoint um they are uh spending a huge amount on their marketing budget tens of millions on their marketing budgets okay okay um okay so michael campbell asks um, and Michael, I, I don't know, are you the same Michael Campbell that's attended a workshop? Because I know that it's, um, I, I did work with a Michael Campbell in the past. I'd love for you to do a follow-up about that. Um, I shoot headshots and charge a session fee and then a per image fee for the ones that they want. Is this a good approach? Packages seem to be limiting and make them locked into a certain budget versus leaving it open-ended. That That's true, Michael, but it depends on what your session fee is. Oftentimes, photographers get burned with session fees. They end up like trying to lure customers in with a very low session fee, $50, $100 or whatever, and then try to make it up on the back end. Oftentimes though, the customers that are going to be drawn to that low end cost, they're probably not going to buy much on the back end. I don't know what your experience is, but with the thousands of photographers that I've spoken to personally about this, a lot of them have been burned um, and they end up not making as much. So I would actually do package deals. I really would. And you want to weed out those crappy customers. You want to go after the high end customers. And this kind of brings it back guys to one of my favorite concepts in business and in photography is the 80, 20 rule. 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of your clients. 80% of your problems in your business come from 20% of your clients. Usually those 20% don't overlap. So oftentimes what photographers are doing is they're wasting so much time on that 80% problem <laughs> coming from 20% of these terrible photographers or terrible uh, clients for that photographer to deal with. And every day they're dealing with these awful people that are just time suck or nickel and diming you, lower tier customers, weed them out, cut them loose, fire those clients, fire those clients. Guys, it's totally cool to do that. And then those 20% that are producing 80% of your revenue, focus on them, give them love, add more value to their lives. And offer them more options, offer them larger packages, maybe incentivize them like Priscilla was talking about. She's a smart one. Incentivize them to refer you to more of those top 20% people, people that are in their network, you know, and offer them opportunity, maybe offer them a substantial um, commission. You know, um, I think that that's a fantastic thing. I think that, um, and, and for any of you guys who are on right now, who are photographers that have been rolled in our workshops before, which is, I would say a huge amount, I would say probably 40% of the, the photographers on right now have attended our epic five-day workshops. Um, for those of you guys who have, any of your friends, anyone that you know who you feel like could benefit in any way from the photography workshop series, if you refer them and you send me their name, email, phone number, and we'll just invite them to some webinars. And, you know, and if they end up wanting to enroll in any of our five-day workshops, we pay you $500 towards enrolling or $500 in cash, we'll send you a check for $500 in cash, or we can, you can use that as a thousand dollars as a thousand dollars towards enrolling in another workshop of your own. And that way I'm incentivizing. You could do the same thing with your packages for your clients, you know, offer them, you know, if it's a high-end wedding client, same thing, maybe offer them, you know, $300 cash or, you know, $600 towards a wedding package or something or printing more pictures offer them some sort of advantage. It's going to advantage you. But the more you incentivize, the better. And I love referrals because I want more of you guys. I want more of the best people. And I know you want that for yourselves as well. Okay. So you guys are asking some absolutely fantastic questions. I, I love this. I love this. I love this. Um, okay. In uh, Karen Hirsch, you also asked again, how do you price for usage if the client does not tell you their media buy or say, we don't know yet, uh, what the media buy will be using, but we want a flat fee. Okay, so there's two ways to handle it. One is you can do a buyout. 
okay? A buyout. Now, buyouts are very expensive. So my suggestion if that happens is it depends on the scale of the business. You know, if it's a buyout for like, say, um, you know, a small little local designer or something like that, or is it a buyout for, you know, say, you know, Perrier or something? It's, it's going to be very, very different as far as um, what that means and how much you're talking about. So my suggestion is, is if that in that case, Karen, I would contact five photographic agents. These are agents that represent photographers. I would go through, there's a website called theagentlist.com and I, and it's, and it's pretty accurate. And basically it has um, the names and contact information of all the photography agents in the world. And um, it's just theagentlist.com. Um, you can go on there, call up these agents um, and um, give them a call and tell them your parameters. Tell them, hey, I've got this project. I'm bidding on it. I wouldn't tell them the name of the brand because you don't want them to swipe it from you, but say I'm bidding on it. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a large company. Um, it's a beverage company. Uh, they make sparkling water and they want this two day shoot. Um, but they don't want, you know, they want three models. It's a lifestyle story, but they don't, they are not telling me their media buy, um, for this. Um, so I'm, I, I'm trying to figure out what I should charge for usage on that project. And I tell you what, Karen, a couple of things are going to happen. One is they're going to be very honest with you and they're going to tell you, oh, for a, a buyout. Oh my gosh. Well, for a buyout, you should be charging, you know, $80,000 or $120,000 that, you know, whatever that they come up with that they think is a fair market price. And then they also might say, well, Karen, if you're bidding on this big campaign, you know what, if you put it in my hands, you know, I'll charge you my 25% agency fee off of your creative and usage. And maybe I handle it um, for this first project. So now you might have a photographic agent interested in working with you, Karen. So that's what I would do. But these are some excellent questions. I absolutely love it. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, an RF uh, asks, um, what do you spend on a shoot which you get $100,000? Um, now, uh, if it's a $100,000 budget, um, I would say rule of thumb, because I am very good at managing my budgets, not wasting money, um, I would say I generally make between 60 to 65% uh, profit off of my production budgets. I would say on average, okay? Depends on the shoot, but I would say if you can get between 60, 65%, if you can get up to 70, you're killing it, okay? On your production budgets as far as your earnings. So on $100,000, you know, if I'm making $65,000 on that, I'm very, very, very happy, okay? Unfortunately, that's not always the case. I talked to a lot of photographers that um, they, um, you know, they might have a $100,000 budget and they're walking away with 15 grand because they basically hired a producer, they wasted a bunch of money, the producer put it in the, you know, that is, is charging them a huge amount and they're wasting a bunch of money on the budget and you're not making much because you're just making your creative fee and usage fee. So, you know, my suggestion is um, uh, handle the budget yourself. If you don't know how to do it, I can help you. Um, it's just something I have a lot of experience with. I have a lot of photographers that do that. Um, and, um, and I can consult with you and guide you. And if you want me to take the reins and be your executive producer, and I can do that too. But um, this is something that uh, there are a lot of opportunities. And most of the time, you photographers are getting shafted. Okay. Um, so uh, what I don't want to see is you guys giving away your services for free. Okay. Um, I just don't want to see that. I want to see you guys making what you deserve every single time. I want you guys crushing it. Okay. It's really important to me because I just, I am dedicated to the rise of photography. And I tell you what, the more that you give away your services for free, the more that you guys are going to be taken advantage of. It's going to kill the industry. It's going to bring down the pricing overall. And right now it shouldn't be, it should be the opposite. We have record inflation and we have this ridiculous inflation going on right now. I mean, interest rates are through the roof. We've got unbelievable, everything is, the cost of everything is astronomical. Why shouldn't you raise your prices? You need to, to keep up with inflation at least. Um, but it, it's also justified because everybody's kind of expecting to pay more now. So I don't think that that's a problem. So um, yeah, and Deborah, um, uh, Deborah Jaff asked a great question. 
Um, you charge for acting as executive producer or take a percentage of the shoot? If so, how much? That's a great question, Deborah. Um, we can talk about that. And I would say we could either, we could do either. We could charge a, um, like a producer fee. So you can add me on to the line item of the, of the budget and I can be a producer on it. Um, and, uh, and that just depends on the scale of the production or um, as a percentage. Um, and, um, but I'd, I'd be happy to just for free, give you some consulting guidance on uh, what to do you know, um, and whether you bring me on or not, either way, it doesn't matter. Um, but I would love to help you. So, um, you know, or I would at least, you know, jump on and set up a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with one of my team members and, um, and we can kind of go from there, but, um, but yeah, Deborah, that's, that's fantastic. And I, I love to hear it. Um, and, uh, and you have some beautiful work too. You have some great work. So I'd love to know more about the parameters of it and stuff like that, but, um, uh, we're happy to help. We're happy to help guide our photographers every step of the way. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, and, uh, yeah, so Deborah, um, and you've had agents over the years in both New York and LA. That's fantastic. Um, all right. I love it. Okay. Um, so guys, uh, um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is portraiture. Okay. So a lot of you guys, I know we talked about some weddings. We talked about some commercial campaigns, portraiture. A lot of photographers tend to, um, vastly undercharge, especially if it's headshots. I know we had a photographer earlier that talked about that. And a lot of photographers charging, you know, hundred bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks for headshots. Um, or if it's a portrait shoot, you know, maybe a hundred dollar session fee, uh, or less. Um, and, uh, and then they charge, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars afterwards or whatever. I don't want you guys doing that. I want you to structure your packages so that at the end of the day, you're making at least $3,000 per port per portrait shoot. And if you are making less than that, then we need to adjust it. Okay. I think that there's no reason in this day and age, especially with the prices of everything right now, a lot of photographers, a lot of portrait photographers that I coach are making $3,000, sometimes $5,000 a portrait session, you know, because at the end of the day with that package, the, depends on the value you bring to the table. And the, those that are making $3,000 or $5,000 or more on their portraits, it's because they've developed mind-blowing content. For instance, they've come to our elite photographic workshops and they've developed this mind-blowing content where they showcase it to the clients and the clients are wowed and dazzled. They're like, oh my gosh, I've got to work with you. Your work is amazing. I get really excited. I want to, you know, I only want to work with the best. I, you know, and they, they love the stuff that you're photographing, you know, and whether it's lifestyle photography or whether it's portraiture, either way, this kind of content gets clients excited. And also portrait clients, not just commercial clients, but being able to justify your value and add more value and maybe even include something like a little video clip that you could shoot of them as well while you're shooting them already. Um, you know, maybe include several, you know, three or four or five wardrobe changes. Um, you know, maybe you make a, a basic portrait session and then you tell a story and do maybe kind of a branding session. I, there's all different types of approaches. And I, and I think that, you know, depends on the angle of the client you're working with, but I would craft a series of packages where your average take on each, um, each client for portraiture should be around 3000 to $4,000. And if it's less than that, we need to adjust your pricing because you guys deserve more. All right. So, um, uh, and Deborah Jaff, uh, Jaff asks, can you discuss actual numbers? Do you suggest people get deposits? Is that a norm now? Absolutely. I would take full payment up front if you can, uh, Deborah. I think that there's no reason if somebody books you and say the package is a $3,000 package, there's no reason why you shouldn't just build them the $3,000 right now and then set up your photo shoot date. You know, Because what you don't want is to go and do a photo shoot and then afterwards try to chase somebody down for money. It just doesn't work. You know, and it's, you don't have time in your day to do that. It's a hassle. And there are people that do that, you know, that, that don't want to, you know, end up paying up even, if you, you know, you provided these amazing services. So watch yourself and make sure that you are, um, you know, making more money off of um, each opportunity that you can do. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, and Kyle McCarthy says, I'm a fairly new senior portrait photographer and I want to work on my pricing. I'm not sure if I can afford to charge that much. Do you have any advice? Kyle, uh, uh, sorry, Kyla, I don't think you can afford not to charge that much. I think that's the trouble. I mean, if it's, um, you know, senior portraits, people spend a lot of money on those these days. And I think that you need to go for the clientele that is willing to spend it. You know, maybe you're not going after the clients that have the real money. You know, I, you need to start going after the clients that are willing to spend it. And I would suggest, um, you know, maybe picking out a, um, like a, you know, a specific senior, 
uh, that are, you know, junior going into their senior year that is in an elite school, maybe an elite private school um, or an upscale area, um, try to pick out a very attractive one. Um, and approach them and offer them a um, uh, an opportunity. You could probably find them on social media or whatever, but offer them an opportunity uh, to get a free session, a free photo shoot. And what I would do is either totally free, I would actually suggest totally free, um, and um, and then um, you go and do and wow and dazzle them, photograph some amazing senior portrait shoots, and then. Um, I would uh, showcase like a little proof book for them, digital or printed or both, and have them share it with all their friends and then ask them, ask their friends to pick it out. Maybe even ask their friends to pick it out on social media, but, you know, go out there and showcase, oh, here are, you know, here are the top 20 selects. Which ones do you, do you think I should, you know, end up printing for my package or whatever, or use for my yearbook? And, you know, have those people do it. In the meantime, all of their friends are now in love with Kyla because wow, your photography is amazing. And you know, you're shooting this beautiful person at the school and now they're interested in you. And then what you tell that customer or that person that that's your um, you know, model student or whatever, is you say, hey, I'm gonna pay you hundred dollars for each one of your friends that end up booking with me, booking their portrait session with me. And I tell you what, that you know, 16, 17 year old kid if they make a hundred dollars for just telling, you know, you which friend that they should, you should contact, they're probably going to do it, you know, and they're going to be excited to do it. And they now represent you at that school. So that'd be one suge suggestion, Kyla. I think that would really, really help benefit you in a lot of ways. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Michael Campbell, great advice. When you provide digitals to a client, um, even just for headshots, is it best to give them both high res uh, megabit file as well as a uh, resize smaller social media blog size of the same retouched image. Um, okay, so if the client's already paid for everything and um, they you're delivering content to them, I would ask them what they want. You know, I mean, just give them what they want. Um, oftentimes, um, these people don't have Photoshop or anything, so they don't want like a TIFF file or a PSD file. I would give them generally just a high resolution JPEG file of everything, a high resolution JPEG. Uh, retouch files is what I would probably deliver. If they wanted something very specific, you know, for, you know, printing in a magazine and they want it to be CMYK and a TIFF file, then that's something different. But I would generally, for most customers, I would just provide high resolution um, uh, retouch JPEGs. And my suggestion also is I like sRGB um, as the color profile. Uh, and um, and guys, I did my bachelor's, my MFA to be a professor of photography. So I'm very adept at color profiling. And sRGB tends to be uh, a, a solid color gamut that's very similar to uh, most screens, um, you know, uh, that they're viewing it on. So that'd be my suggestion. Uh, okay. Um, all right. And uh, let's see, Deborah Jaff. Uh, yes, but with, with businesses, it seems awkward to do that. Uh, my old agent, New York's uh, city advises photo assistant 650 for a 10 hour day, equipment rental, uh, processing fee. I mean, yeah, I mean, you should be charging for all of that. I think 650 a day for a photo assistant is kind of high. Um, I think maybe more like 400 a day for a photo assistant. Um, and yeah, processing fee is totally fine. Uh, equipment rental, obviously add it all up. You can uh, add um, a percentage uh, margin on that. I don't, I just charge them the standard fee. Um, and then I just bill, bill the client and they rent it for myself because I own everything. I have about $100,000 worth of equipment in my storage facility that I use. Um, but these are really, really great questions, Deborah. I really appreciate it. I love how engaged you are with all of that. Um, okay. Uh, yes. And, and also Deborah, yeah, I always get, um, model releases signed, including at our Epic photographic workshops. I always want to make sure we have model releases signed, even though technically you don't typically need model releases for most uses. Um, generally, uh, the only people that ask for it, if it's like a branding campaign, like an advertising campaign, that's when they would um, want a very specific model release. Um, but for instance, for all of the Epic Photographic Workshops that we direct with these top models, um, we are getting model releases for editorial, like editorial publication and, um, and portfolio use to market yourself as much as you want, um, just like these Epic images here. And um, and that way, uh, you know, you can use this as much as you want because you're the copyright owner and they are your pictures uh, to do whatever you want with. Um, as far as showcasing them and getting them published. So um, just this last, you know, uh, last year, we we won um, uh, seven out of the top 10 fashion photographers in America award, all directed, art directed and produced by me and photographed by our unbelievably talented photographers that attend our workshops. And you can see them right here, which is really exciting. Um, and these are all massively benefiting them and their photographic brand and justifying them to charge more for their photography.
Okay. Uh, Paul Abelou says, do you have a template or base file for a budget sheet that you advise? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, one cool thing is when you start uh, talking with one of my photographic consultants and, you know, and especially Paul, if you end up coming to one of our epic workshops, even if it's a virtual workshop, we can provide you with a series of um, example budgets and proposals. Many of, I mean, I have several of them that I give to my customers, ones that I shot for major campaigns, like the one I just showed you, as well as ones for like Pepsi and also like a pharmaceutical campaign, the Menda. Um, and I, we're happy to showcase all of that. I also like to use a bidding software called Blinkbid. And it's a very, very awesome uh, bidding software that's specifically for photographers. And I love that. I've been using that for probably 10 years now. Um, okay. So, uh, excellent. And Kyla, yeah, make sure to uh, sign up for one of those one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions with one of our photographic consultants. Um, and Deborah, you as well. Um, and, uh, you guys definitely set that up and I would love, um, for you to talk to somebody on our team. Um, all right. Uh, okay guys. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, so I am really, really excited, um, about everything that we have been talking about today. Hopefully you guys can modify some of your pricing, increase pricing, justify it with new Epic content. And I'd strongly recommend getting involved in one of our Epic photographic workshops, our five day experiences. We have Miami beach shooting with supermodels. Uh, we have got, you know, we've worked with models from sports illustrated models from, um, uh, Victoria's secret, um, some of the top models from guests, some of the creme de la creme de la creme. We have this coming up next month in Miami that I'm really, really, really excited about. Um, we've got an epic experience in Virginia, the Washington DC area in May, and that's all on commercial lifestyle advertising photography. And we're flying in top models from Miami, New York, and LA. We're just happy to be shooting in Virginia at an unbelievable, epic, um, sprawling estate, which is going to be absolutely over the top. Um, and then, of course, I really want you guys to come to my French castle, which um, this is my 49 room, 13th century French castle. Um, and this one um, is a very, very, very popular one right now. Um, and this one is shooting with top models from Milan and Paris and photographing and being able to stay at a 49 room castle, um, whether you're staying at our, um, my, this epic castle or so one of my sister, the sister castles nearby um, and uh, being able to photograph on location over four days. Um, of shooting at massive scale production and creating just mind blowing content. Really, really, really excited. Following this, we have our New York Fashion Photography Workshop, uh, which uh, follows New York Fashion Week. It's just a few weeks after the French Castle. And this one is unbelievable. We shoot with supermodels of in Versace, our Giorgio Armani, Vogue, Vanity Fair, unbelievable production. Um, and this one also, if you are a wedding photographer or portrait photographer, this is also a really great beneficial workshop for you on top of being a fashion photographer. And then when it all uh, comes down to the end of the year, we have our Elite Masterclass. And the Elite Masterclass, which is, we've probably won more awards from this. In the last two years, we've won 175 photographic awards. And um, many of them were actually shot at our Elite Masterclass. This is the creme de la creme. And it's the most epic workshop that we do in the United States each year. Um, and this one happens in October. Um, it's a five-day massive scale production. This last year, we shot the first two days at a $16 million mansion um, in um, Hermosa Beach doing a high-end commercial lifestyle advertising shoot. Um, day three, we shot on location with 1940s fighter planes. Um, just like you see here. Um, and we shot with top models shooting this unbelievable fashion story. Um, day four, uh, we shot with a, a, an epic tribal fashion story. And then day five, we shot at a um, $14 million Beverly Hills mansion um, with big flowing dresses. So it was an unbelievable uh, five-day experience and our photographers that attended, it created the greatest images of a lifetime. So um, this is the end cap of the year in October and it's our most elite workshop and that is incredible experience. Um, all the workshops range from $16,500 up to $25,000. And that is a tiny pittance compared to the production quality because the scale of production is equivalent to a $100,000 a day production budget. Just like these campaigns I'm talking about, it's the same. It's literally the same level of quality and production. And the reason we can do it with our workshops is because of all my relationships all the connections, everything I pull in over the years, you know, over my entire career, I've been able to build relationships and be able to bring you guys to these unbelievable locations that would normally be like 20 or $30,000 a day. And I'm able to get them, um, you know, hooked up. I'm able to get some of the top models in the world that want to work with me to get, you know, at a, you know, instead of paying an exorbitant, ridiculous $10,000 a day, I get them for less. So I'm able to produce and do a scale at the same scale of hundred thousand dollar a day over the course of five days. And it's a tiny pittance of what that would cost if you were going to try to do it on your own. And that's why the value of the photography workshop series is unbelievable. 
because the quality and the production value that you get alone on top of working with me on all aspects of your art direction, storytelling and shooting, and then to walk away with a 40 image cohesive body of work that would take you years to develop on your own. And now you can justify higher pricing. All right, guys, thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you guys at the next one. And um, I want you guys to walk away with this with a complete new understanding of pricing. And I hope that adjusts everything you guys do going forward.